Good day and welcome to another Catholic Culture and Faith episode. Today we're going to be discussing about loving our neighbor and bearing our crosses. What is love and how does it pertain to our neighbor? Charity or love is a theological virtue which we love God above all things for his own sake and our neighbors as ourselves for the love of God. Dear friends, let us love one another because love comes from God. Whoever loves is a child of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. And God showed his love for us by sending his only Son into the world, so that we might have life through him. Dear friends, if this is how God loved us, then we should love one another. No one has seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in union with us, and his love is made perfect in us. If we say we love God but hate others, we are liars. For we cannot love God, whom we have not seen, if we do not love others, whom we have seen. So why do we have to love our neighbor? As it is written, we must love one another, otherwise we are not in union with God. As well, it's a core commandment that are stated before the Ten Commandments. Jesus implemented these two commandments when he was on earth. So if we believe the Lord Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior, then we should listen to what has been proclaimed. Here, let's look at what Jesus said to his disciples in Mark chapter 12, verse 29 to 31. The first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no greater commandments than these. Well, how does one love your neighbor? Let's turn to St. Paul for some of his wisdom. Apostle St. Paul reminds us of this. He who loves his neighbor has fulfilled the law. The commandment, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and other commandments are summed up in this sentence. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is fulfilling the law. To truly love our neighbor, we must love God first, because we are called to love our neighbors as ourselves for the love of God. If we follow the commandments, then we can cause no wrong to our neighbor, because love does no wrong. To follow the commandments in thought is quite easy. I'm going to love my neighbor today. There, that's it. It's over and done now. Now what? If only life was this easy. I'm sure there's many people that have a great connection to God and can do this with perfection, but for many others, it's not so easy, and it takes a bit more time and many prayers to do so. For the rest of us that are having a hard time with loving our neighbor, we must learn to carry our crosses. According to Matthew chapter 16, verse 24, Then Jesus told his disciples, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself, and take up his cross and follow me. But the question we have to ask ourselves is, what does bearing one's cross have to do with loving one's neighbor? It has everything to do with loving one's neighbor. Because when you bear your cross, you resist temptation, sins, ethical and moral situations, and breaking the commandments of God. If you love God with all your mind, heart, soul, and strength, You will resist offending or hurting your neighbor out of the love of God. Because love does no wrong to your neighbor. Only with God's love and guidance can we truly live a good life with love for our neighbors. As it is written in Luke chapter 10, verse 25 to 37, the Good Samaritan, it shows us who is the good neighbor and how to inherit eternal life all in one parable. Listen up and hear some very important teachings. The Parable of the Good Samaritan One day, an expert in law stood up to test him. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, Jesus replied. How do you read it? He answered, love your Lord God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus said. Do this and you will live. Wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, 
and who is my neighbor? Jesus took up this question and said, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he fell into the hands of robbers. They stripped him, beat him, went away, leaving him half dead. Now, by chance, a priest was going down the same road, but when he saw him, he passed on the other side. So, too, when a Levite came to that spot and saw him, he passed by on the other side. But when a Samarian on a journey came upon him, he looked at him and had compassion. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, poured on oil and wine. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Take care of him, he said, and on my return I'll repay you for any additional expense. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell in the hands of robbers? The one who showed him mercy, replied the law expert. Then Jesus told him, Go and do likewise. Such an educational parable, two great lessons. The first teaches us how to obtain eternal life, and the second teaches us how we should be in life, and how we should act to be a good neighbor to all people that we encounter. But we have to remember to love our neighbors, and to remember the great parable, final judgment. Everyone we encounter, we must learn to love and assist them in hearing the word of Jesus Christ and giving them the opportunity to have everlasting life. If we are having issues with loving our neighbors, we must learn to carry our crosses and to teach everyone else to do the same. How can we bear our crosses, you ask? Well, I think the greatest way to carry our crosses for the love of our neighbor and to resist temptations and sins is to move towards perfection, which would be to pray unceasingly, or in other words, to pray at all times. A reading from Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 to 18. Be joyful always, pray at all times, be thankful in all circumstances. This is what God wants from you in your life in union with Christ Jesus. What a straightforward approach to bearing your cross. Or in other words, carrying your cross. You don't have to do all these suggestions at once, but I personally think it's much more effective if you do so. Use what works for you. First point would be, remain calm and full of joy. Joy isn't an emotional, in this sense that we commonly think of joy. Rather, it's a state of being undisturbed by negative things in our life. In other words, for some of you, you might recognize focusing on heaven. The second point would be, pray at all times. Literally, pray however you choose to pray, either with a traditional prayer, ejaculatory prayer, and a simple request or words. But include Jesus in carrying your cross, and remember... These can either be quite vocal, or they can even be done mentally. The third point, literally, be thankful in all circumstances. There's a book called Being in Uniformity with God's Will by St. Alphonsus de Ligore, which covers this topic much more thoroughly. As Catholics, we must remember that to love our neighbor isn't just a suggestion, but it's a way of life. If we want to be in union with God, we must learn to carry our crosses and to love our neighbor. And if we falter, learn from our mistakes and utilize the sacraments, like confession, to help us on our journey. We can do anything with God's guidance, but we must reach out and seek. From all of us here at Catholic Culture and Faith, stay strong, stay faithful, and stay united. We can make this world a greater place one day at a time.